Welcome back. It's time for our very first hot topic. I want to take a look. Want to take a look at the troops that have been deployed to the southeast by the chief of army staff to counter IPOP's sit-at-home order. And that order was given by Finland-based pro Biafra agitator Simon Ekba, uh, who has said that with effect from Monday, July 31st, that uh, two weeks sit-at-home will be enforced in the southeast to demand for the immediate and unconditional release of Mazi Namdekanu, amongst other requests that he has. I've been joined by Reverend Joseph John Hayap, Chairman Khan, uh, Cardona State, who's joining us this morning from Cardona State. Good morning to you, Reverend John Hayap. Good morning, and uh, best of the day for, to all our viewers. Thank you so much, Reverend. Reverend, how are you looking at this? How are you processing this latest development regarding the insecurity situation in the Southeast? Uh, the federal government is deploying troops down there to counter this order by pro Biafra uh, agitator Simon Ekba. Well, let me begin my response by applauding the chief of army staff. When General Lagwaja was sent to the one mechanized division in Kaduna, for those of us who followed his activities and antecedents, he came out in full force. He went out and led the troop to fish out bandits, to fish out terrorists that have been tormenting and denying the people of Kaduna peace. Unfortunately, the power that be at that time for reason they know that we may not know, decide to pull him out immediately and send him to a new posting. I am happy to say because we are still around that this same man that we applaud, this same man that we cherish, this same man that we believe had a good intention is now the chief of army staff. And the essence of this change in the service chief hmm. was to inject a new spirit to checkmate the insecurity that has bedeviled the entire country, not just the Southeast. So to me, this is a welcome development. Now to the issue of the Southeast. It is sad and unfortunate that in this age, some characters or individuals, for whatever reason, would choose to stir up problems for their people Every Nigeria, irrespective of region or identity, knows that things have not been going well across this country in the past years. But you cannot, for whatever reason, stop your whole people from doing their legitimate businesses, from going to school, from going about doing what will help them, and ask them to sit at home for a particular day. And you are not government. You are a non-state actor. You are saying that what you want is a Biafra nation. If you want to be a Biafra nation, you don't go like that to get the Biafra nation. That means that even if you get the Biafra nation, the people you are claiming or you are parading yourself to be defending, we are going to be uh, terrorized. So I find the way and the approach of IPO quite ridiculous, not matured to today's war. I feel that there are better ways that this group of people can point out their demands and insist that their demands are met than what they are saying. Recently, the photos and the kind of information we read about those who parade themselves as the leaders of this group that are forcing innocent citizens to sit at home, they don't even have integrity. Neither do they have a good testimony of life. But they are just exploiting the pains and the sorrow, the poor leadership that we are having in this country and saying that they are fighting for the people, when in reality they are only just fighting for themselves. I want to challenge those who care to listen, that unless our government sit up and show that in this country we have a government, we have powers, that we have authority, we have a constitution, that no one will just come and terrorize fellow citizens, we will be in problem. If you think that what they are doing is good and you clap for them, another new group will come. Hmm. Some years back, the government of, the, of Nigeria faced... Uh, the United States have, uh, the volunteers, uh, volunteers, as they call themselves, they terrorize people. We knew how they were dealt with before they stopped. 
And we know the other group of Boko Haram. And we later came with bandits in Northwest. So we can't allow our country to be hijacked by some people hiding under whatever guys to say they want to fight for people. Well, in reality, they are enjoying themselves abroad. They are having a field day. They don't even care where those people go. Look, I have traveled to many parts of the Southeast. The fact is that in the last four months or three months, I have been to many places. I can see the commitment of local women, villagers, because I actually went to villages, not cities. I only slept in the city, but every day I go to certain villages. See the commitment, the desire by the people to come out and earn a living. The mm -hmm. desire by the people to come out and have something to feed their children. The desire for the people to come out and make sure they have something that they can pay their children's school fees. And you just sit and say, nobody comes out in a whole day. Have you helped their economy? Have you helped their life? Have you helped them in anything? Have you really sat down with them and know what they want and how they want this to go? I think something is wrong. So I applaud the chief of army staff and I pray that he's not just going to be with IPO. These kind of groups that I imagine from different areas in Nigeria or different regions in Nigeria and terrorizing Nigeria by claiming that they are fighting for the people should know that we have a government. Yeah, it's interesting to have you uh, commend uh, General Tarid uh, Lagbajan saying that he's done well um, uh, in the past. And I, I find that quite, um, quite uh, commendable. Uh, however, um, I also know that no government uh, worth its salt would negotiate with terrorists, right? So, indeed, move in the right direction. However, how would you respond to those who are saying, look, what is happening with this case is a very peculiar one in the sense that the IPOB man, uh, Mazi Kanu Nandi, has been, a court has ordered for his release. And the states, the, 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 the Southeast governors, a lot of them and their leaders indeed, have called for the release of this man. Shouldn't the first step at arriving, uh, achieving peace in that region be to release this man? Well, that's another issue altogether. I don't subscribe to government or the executive to refuse to obey the order of the court. We, ask, we should be governed by the rule of law, which means as a citizen and also our government must obey our courts. If we don't obey the judgment of our court or the orders of our court, we are calling for anarchy. So those who have the powers or those who are responsible for this, must listen. If the court have ruled that the man should be given on bail, allow him go and then watch over watch all his movement. After all, we know the sac the effort government put in and the amount of the, the, the kind of investment government did to fetch this man out there or to arrest this man wherever they arrested him and brought him back to Nigeria. That means the man has nowhere to go and hide that they cannot fish him out. So government must learn to obey court orders. But we see. As we ask government to obey court orders, we must also tell those who are also taking the laws into their hand that what they are doing is wrong. Oh, in the whole of the Southeast is made up of highly intelligent people. It's made up of highly organized people. It's made up of highly successful people. It's made up of highly placed elders with good experience. Can they exploit a way of dialogue? Can they exploit a way of putting some kind of pressure on government? to release this Namdekanu. And I think there's nothing wrong if they release him as long as the court has ruled so. But what we don't want is that some people hiding in the name of Namdekanu or hiding on the name of IPOP and terrorizing. Unfortunately, they are actually terrorizing their innocent brothers and sisters. They are denying them the peace and the joy they're supposed to have. They are hindering them from going out to do their businesses and do seek for their daily source of livelihood. So what kind of struggle is that? A struggle that you end up destroying yourself, that's not struggle. A struggle is to find peace for yourself, is to find freedom for yourself, is to find joy for yourself, is to find opening and for yourself. But a freedom that you end up terrorizing your own. So after getting the freedom and the people are, are dead because of hunger, who will succeed, who will be, remain in the Biafra nation? As much as I understand what they are agitating for, as much as we want fairness and justice in Nigeria, but we should be able to call this group that they are not doing it right. You are not doing it civilized way. You are not doing it in a mature way. You are not doing it as people who understand. You are instead terrorizing your people. So that's why government can hide and call them terrorists and will not negotiate with them. But if they are limited to the issue of really fighting for their people, everybody will understand. After all, my people in Southern Kaduna also have their concern and troubles with this government. Other people in other regions of this country also have their concern and trouble with this government. Let's assume all these groups just come out now. 
then we wouldn't have a country. And if we don't have a country, then who are you going to be discussing with? I want them to do or to seek for the release of Namde Kanu, but not at the expense of the joy, the freedom of their local people who do not even understand what is going on. Indeed. Uh, we've seen videos. Is how do they survive? We've seen videos. We've heard reports of people who have been killed, maimed, uh, properties burnt in the southeast. The growth of that region has been stunted. Uh, definitely no investor would go to the southeast for anything. Matter of fact, being Look deployed the or transferred... Treat their people any day they are enforcing that order of sit at home. Yeah. You beat people as if... No, 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 that's not... That's inhuman. That's a violation of the right of the people. They so don't just flog them, they also freedom. kill them. How do you violate the right of people when you want freedom? Reverend, my question is this. Having looked at how this whole drama is affecting that region, would you say that um, the movers and shakers of the Igbo people, among the Igbo people, you just alluded to the fact that they have great people uh, from that area. Would you uh, accept the fact that, or accept the opinion in some quarters that they are not doing enough on their own to put an end to this, to arrest this situation, the Igbo people, the movers and shakers well, among the Igbo people. The response to that your statement or that your question is a yes and no. It's no because if you look at the characters placing this sit at home order, their attitude, their lifestyle, you may be tempted to conclude that they are the kind who do not listen to anybody. It seems those leaders and those old men, great men of the Igbo land may have tried to help them see, but as far as they are concerned, they see those people as failures, so they just want to do things their own way. And there's a limit to how you can force yourself on people if you are advising them. Sometimes those people may have advised them and they terrorize the people or terrorize members of their families, and they are trying to avoid that and they don't want to go into a necessary conflict uh, looking at the situation at the moment. So that is one side of it. The other side of it is, well, most of those who are actually making this agitation, you know, are not living in this country. <laughs> they are actually having a field day. Exactly. The Ekpa man is based in they Finland. A, I, I call it a field day, enjoying themselves, going to the beach and having phone well so who do you even talk to now these are people that if you carry your phone and call them the chances is that they will record your voice go and uh, change the whole conversation and, and present and blackmail you so everybody is so scared of even discussing with them and that's why as nigerians we must collectively tell each other the truth i am a nigerian my father fought in the Civil War. The fact is that my father was among those army that were forced to retire prematurely because they were injured during the war. And I feel time has come that Nigerians must go together, work together, and unite. But the way and manner some people will just take all of us for granted and to take us for a ride as if we don't know what we're doing, it's not good enough for Nigeria. Yeah, but the fact it's that, the the fact the that some of these... It's not good enough for even the future of the kind of governance we want to see in Nigeria. If our government is bad, we have other ways we can collectively put pressure on them to change and meet up with the current realities of the world. Reverend. But if you just come up and terrorize everybody and I give a picture that does not exist, and I have read many part of the stories that comes out from Hypo. I am sad that yeah, Reverend. over 85% of the stories are just fake stories that cannot make any sense. Mm. Reverend, uh, the fact yes. that some of these non-state actors um, are not based in Nigeria, like Simon Ekpa, for instance, based in Finland, does it mean that their people should not... I mean, Igbo people are all over the place. Um, all over the place, very successful, very strong, very powerful men and women, home and abroad. It, it still doesn't mean that they shouldn't be able to arrest this situation. Nip it in the bud. Matter of fact, years back, they should have. I saw a video recently um, indicting some Igbo sons and daughters over this same matter. I, and I'm saying, can't they or couldn't they have done more or better in securing the lives of their people? and their region before now? Well, in the past eight years, the drama surrounding these agitations and the cry was like a flagellation agenda. Unfortunately, unfortunately for us now, that era is over. I can see effort by the current, some of the governors in some of the Southeast states beginning to stand the authority and say, no, no more. 
I just don't want them to speak to the media. I want them to act. I want them to join force with the chief of army staff and every other security agents to ensure that this evil stopped. So if it has not started on time, now something has started. Let's even look at what the chief of army staff is doing. He needs the support of their governors. He needs the support of their stakeholders. Even in the past, they were afraid to talk. In the past, they have spoken, but those groups didn't listen to them. Now that there's a commitment from government, now that there's a commitment from the security agency, please support them and let's bring to a stop this. Let the story of sit at home be a, an old story. People shouldn't just have a particular day that they cannot go out. People shouldn't just have a particular day that some faceless individuals are denying them even to go out and seek for their day. Because so many innocent people out of their quest to get food or get their daily living came out on such days and were killed or men or injured for no reason. I think that's where some of us as Nigerians are saying, Stop this. Let's stop this. Let's do this. Okay, you can continue your Biafra agitation. You have other ways to do it. You may even have support from other places. But please, don't torment and terrorize innocent people who have no understanding of exactly what you are doing, who are not even enjoying one quarter of what you are enjoying, and you are claiming to be fighting for them. You can't fight for us, and you are living such kind of life, and you are putting us in pain. I think that's not fight. If it is a fight you want for us, let's fight and feel the pains together. Let's fight and feel the deprivation together. Let's fight and feel the denial together. If it is really sitting at home, come and let's sit at home together so that we will know you really mean sitting at home. Are they, can they honestly tell Nigerians that on such day they also sit at home? No, they are somewhere doing their businesses. So that sit at home order to me does not make any impact because you've not stopped work in Abuja, neither have you stopped businesses in Kanu, neither have you stopped businesses in Lagos, neither have you stopped anything going on in, uh, in Koji. You just torment your people, particularly your people, the one you are claiming to be fighting for. I'm not sure that is a wise way of doing it. And now that there is an effort from the chief of army staff, and I believe that backed by the new president, the key Igbo leaders, the responsible Igbo elders should support this. If anybody has accused you in the past that you were not supportive, now you've gotten an opening. Probably that time there was no opening for you to give support. Now there's an opening. So let's see what goes on from now forward so that we don't dwell too much in the past and do the blame game. Now that an opportunity has given itself or uh, make itself available, let's capitalize on it and stop this. The people of Southeast Nigeria must be free. The people of Southeast Nigeria must be happy. The people of Southeast Nigeria should enjoy their freedom. No one should trample on their right, hiding under fighting for them when in reality he is actually doing a self agenda. All right. There is also an angle to this whole Biafra agitation thing that um, I should probably ask you about. Uh, how, how would you respond to those who feel that the Nigerian state itself has not been fair to the region of the, the Southeast region? There have been lots of injustices and probably um, some have also said there's been lack of genuine concern for the welfare and well-being of people of the Southeast. And also, why, why do you think that governments, the last government and this government, does not appear from the body languages that we've seen to be interested in probably having some sort of discussion with Innamdekanu, as some have advocated? Okay, well, let's put it this way. The previous government was not fair to more than 80% or 70% of Nigeria. It's not just the Southeast people. The last administration was not fair to my people, was not fair to other sides of Nigerians. But the groups, because of certain reasons, didn't carry dagger against government and do not show that they were not angry with government. We did voice out our concern. We did cry out and show Nigerians that things are not going on well. There was this agenda that we didn't understand. But what? So the Southeast is not exempted. But let's quickly also go a little bit backward. Can the Southeast be honest with Nigeria and tell Nigeria what happened from 1999 to today? If you want to go and look at statistics, the Southeast have benefited from Nigerian government from 1999 till oh, Buhari's government. To be candid, let's be honest to ourselves and stop this game. Look at the appointment. They've had central bank governor. They've had the minister of finance. They have, uh, even in the last government, one minister that served long was the minister of uh, foreign affairs. He's from that, uh, he's either from uh, Delta or at least of the Igbo extraction. We have also other ministers that so it is not just like that. 
My tribe have not also produced president. Other tribes have not also produced president. So this thing is a Nigerian challenge that we have to collectively sit down and address it, collectively sit down and fight it, so that there will be a true federal character, respect federal character in Nigeria. It's not just an Igbo thing. It is also about me. It's also about other tribes in Nigeria. So as the Biafra or Apple are fighting, let them remember there are other Nigerians who also are agree with the way things are. So why don't they seek to connect with other Nigerians who also feel the same, so that the fight will not just be a tribal fight or one regional fight, but a larger Nigerian group who feel disenchanted, who feel not being carried along by Nigerian government. But if we are going to look at statistics, it is not fair for such group to actually say they are not. In, go in the government of uh, uh, Good Luck Jonathan, from the SSG to a key uh, office uh, policy makers and certain office holders was in the whole time of uh, Obasanjo, the Senate presidents, the fact that they were given the slot of the Senate president in the eight years because of certain things they know better than we do. They keep having issues that they change up to within one administration or the same administration. They had other over four or five people, but from the same instruction serving as Senate president. If at that time as lawmaker, it was an equal Senate president of Nigeria that killed the third time of Obasanjo, how couldn't that also have worked for them, for him to bring up certain uh, laws during his time as Senate president that would have corrected some of the things we are doing? So sometimes the poor people throw over accusation as if nothing has ever come to them, they should also look back that certain things had actually came to them. We will not even have a deputy speaker in my village or in my, in my area, or a deputy or a minority leader in the Senate or in the House of Rep in my area. So they are better off. And you see, the problem we have in this country, which we must address is, people just think that everything in Nigeria boils down on Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. No. There are, the larger groups make up Nigeria are more than these three groups. But because the way and manner we present this country, people just assume there's no other person except these three. No. There are larger people. So let's think Nigeria. Let's respect others in Nigeria. Let's give opportunity. Let's understand that others too are not happy with the things going on. So let's now find a way of connecting, working together with those other people who feel the same way we feel, so that we can force correction, we can force the change, we can force good governance in our country. But when we terrorize our people in the guise that we want government to listen to us, to me, it is not right. For government, Namdekalu have been arrested by you, you've taken him to court, you have kept him long, the courts have ruled. So obey the law, you see, unless and until our government start understanding that the reason why we are having confusion and groups coming out to fight the nation is because we ourselves have not obeyed our rules. Once we obey court orders and then make it clear that if you violate our rules, we will deal with you. If that our is rules a good place. Are wrong, we also must act in accordance with the law. So Reverend government Jason. not obeying court orders is a different ball game, but it's sad that government is doing that, and we want our government to start respecting the rule of law. If there's that is a order, perfect place to end this conversation, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Let's think Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure discussing with you. And I hope things are getting better in Kaduna State. You had said that you were hopeful that with the new governor, that things may take a new turn in Kaduna State. Are you seeing any signs, any ray of light there now? Well, at the moment, uh, the situation in the country is calming down. And uh, yeah, there are pockets of kidnappings and attacks, but not as pronounced as it was in the past, likely because the bandits or the terrorists are not so sure what is going to follow up and they are careful not to put themselves in trouble. And we want those in authority to keep that tempo. Let the bandit be on the run, not sitting down to be strategized. The reason why they had a field day eight years ago was they were sitting down comfortably, just strategizing what to do next, what to do next. Nobody was keeping them on the run. And that's why they can kidnap people and have supposed to give them food because they are living in comfort. Thank you so much, Reverend Joseph Hayap. You're welcome. Reverend Joseph John Hayab, Chairman, Can Cardinal State, was our guest on the first hot topic. Time for our second hot topic. We'll bring that right now after this moment. Stay with us. <laughs>